Hi there. Thank you so much for joining me today. This is Julie DiMatteo from thepaperpixie.com. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in the U.S. And in this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make this really cool gift box. I'm referring to it as a geometric no glue box. But I want to give a shout out to two people who inspired me with this box. Former UK demonstrator Anne Melvin and German demonstrator Angelika Schmitz. Kind of a combination of their two boxes and I pixified it to fit. Let me open this up. A gift card and some chocolates. I've got a magnetic closure here. It also holds itself together but I thought the magnet was a really nice touch. And we're going to be using the Snowflake Wishes bundle. I love this paper. Love the bundle that coordinates with it. So let me show you how easy this is to make. I'm going to start with a piece of Highland Heather cardstock that measures seven inches by ten and a quarter inches. And along the seven inch side, we're going to score this at one and three quarters from each side. So one and three quarters and one and three quarters. Then I'm going to rotate it to the ten and a half inch side and we're going to score this at one and a half and three. And then I'm going to score it at four, but only between the two horizontal score lines. So I'm kind of eyeballing it, trying to pick up the groove there at four inches. And then we're scoring just between those two horizontal score lines. So I'm going to rotate it and we're going to score this again at one and a half, three. And then again at four, but only between those two horizontal score lines. While we've got it on the ten and a quarter inch side, I'm going to make a little tick mark at five and one eighth. And I'm just taking the ball tip of my stylus and pressing down right at five and one eighth. I'm going to flip this over and make a tick mark again at five and one eighth. You want to hold on to the stylus from your Simply Scored. And then I'm going to bring in the template here to illustrate what we're going to do next. We've got some diagonal score lines here and I think you can see them. They're sort of in a W shape and an M shape this way. But we're going to be scoring from that short score line at the four inch mark on the diagonal up to the next score line. And we're just going to kind of zigzag our way between those points. So that five and one eighth inch tick mark is this point here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Now I'm going to repeat the same thing on the opposite side. So it's going to look like that. All right, next I'm going to fold and burnish on all the score lines that go all the way across the cardstock. And then bringing back our template again, we're actually going to come in and remove these corner sections. And I'm actually going to remove the score lines completely. So I'm just going to cut just to the left of the score line here. And then just to the right of the score line here to remove that corner. So you'll see we've got those score lines are left on the piece we removed. And I'm going to repeat that in all four corner sections. The score lines that point towards the middle, we're going to fold those out. And then naturally, these other ones are going to want to fold in. Sort of like so. See that? Now if you can get your bone folder in there to burnish, it helps. But it's a little bit awkward. So just take your time with it. The crisper the fold, the nicer the box will look. Again, that one's going together even easier. And then we're just going to work our way around to get those diagonal score lines worked into place. All right, so now when we fold these two sides in, you're going to see they're going to meet up. And then you're going to have sort of this hexagon shape with all these little triangles in there. And this is how that box is going to open in the center. Such a cool box. I love this. All right, now the next thing we're going to do is round all four corners of these flaps using the detailed trio punch. So now this is going to look like our template. Now the next thing I'm going to do is just dry fit it and you might find that one edge tucks better into the other edge than the other. So I'm just going to see if these will tuck in okay. And that's a pretty good fit there. 
That's how it's going to go together. That's going to tuck in. It's actually holding itself closed, but I want to keep the flap down. So that's why we're going to add the magnet. Now you could certainly close this with a Velcro dot, or you can certainly tie ribbon around it or a belly band as well. All right. So next, before we put this together, we're going to go ahead and do our designer series paper. This is the Snowflake Wishes Designer Series paper. I love the purples and blues and the whites in this. I have three pieces that measure one and three eighths by three and three eighths. And if your pattern was directional, you'd want to make sure this was in landscape. And then I have two pieces that measure seven eighths by three and three eighths. So you just want to pay attention to where we're tucking this in. And we want to make sure that we're going to put one of those panels of Designer Series paper right here. So I'm going to use liquid glue for that. Another one of these panels, we're going to need to round the two bottom edges with the detailed trio punch. And this piece is going to attach to this opposite flap. And the next piece is going to go right next to that one. And then our 7 8 inch pieces are going to go in the narrower sections. That's how that's going to look. This is the flap that tucks in. This is the flap that's going to fold over the top. Again, let's just eyeball that so I can show you how the designer series paper looks. Like so. Really, really pretty. Now let's work on adding our magnets. I have two really strong neodymium magnets. I'm going to start with one and I'm going to stick it to a glue dot. Now we're going to want this one to go on the side of the flap that's tucking in. So I'm going to pick up that magnet and we're actually going to put it right here in this panel. So we're about an eighth of an inch away or so from this score line. Now these are going to fold in to hide that. Now we're going to go ahead and close our box. And this is how you figure out where to put the other magnet. So using that magnet, I'm going to just drop it right on that panel. It's going to line up the proper positive and negative. I love that. I'm going to grab another mini glue dot and place that on top of that magnet. Like so. And then we can make sure this is closed tightly and then we'll fold that flap over the top there to pick up that magnet. Then I'm just pressing that into place. Now you can also use E6000 glue for this if you're worried that your glue dots aren't going to hold. How cute is that? All right, let's fill this with our treats. All right, so we've got a gift card, and I was able to fit six Dove Promises in here. They're sort of in portrait mode. If you can believe there's a portrait in landscape mode of the Dove chocolates. We'll go ahead and fold the edges here and close our box. And it really is a perfect fit. Chocolates don't shake around. I love that it fits a gift card. And let's go ahead and decorate our box. We're going to be using the Snowflake Wishes bundle and the sentiment Snowflake Wishes for a Merry Christmas. I have also die cut a snowflake from the Balmy Blue Glimmer Paper. How pretty is that? And I've also cut a piece of Whisper White that measures three quarters by three and one eighth. We're going to stamp the sentiment in Night of Navy. I'm going to add a glue dot to the back of our snowflake. Place that off to the left. I'm grabbing a trio of dimensionals. Then we'll add our sentiment over top. Put the sentiment a little bit off to the right. And then we're going to finish it off with a trio of the blue adhesive back sequins. And there we have our geometric no glue gift box sized perfectly to fit a gift card and some treats. And I just love the way that looks. So easy to change this up for so many different occasions. What a great teacher gift this would be or just to give gift cards to your friends and loved ones this holiday season. So thank you so much for joining me today. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and hit that bell icon so you don't miss my next video. If you're interested in purchasing any of the Stampin' Up! products I used today, they'll be linked in the description. And I'll also include a link to my detailed blog post with all project measurements, details, and a picture of the template. I'd love to have you come visit me at thepaperpixie.com where I post projects every weekday to inspire you. 
And if you don't want to miss a thing, you can subscribe to receive blog updates via email, and you'll receive an email each time I publish a new post. You can shop with me anytime at thepaperpixie.com shop. And if you're interested in a discount on your Stampin' Up! purchases, the starter kit is the ultimate bundle, and it's a great way to fill your wish list for less. You can purchase the starter kit at thepaperpixie.com join. And if you don't already have a demonstrator and you'd like a complimentary copy of one of our catalogs, you can order catalogs through me at thepaperpixie.com catalogs. And if you give this project a try, I would love to see what you made, so feel free to share it on social media with the hashtag paperpixie, and I'll be sure to check it out. Thanks again for watching. I hope you have a wonderful and blessed day. Take care. Bye.